Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon, and today we are going to be looking at the impact of both the Crimson Invasion expansion, as well as the Shining Legends set, on the expanded format. Now tomorrow there's going to be a top 10 list for London, so be aware, we're not forgetting about you guys, that is still the most important thing, but I've been looking into expanded, because it's still so vast and there's so many decks that are viable and change in popularity and sort of tip the scales of what's good and what's not. There's actually some really impactful cards from both of these sets in Expanded and um, I think it really has been shaped up by these two sets so we'll be delving into that and uh, yeah here is going to be a quick rundown of what we're doing today. First of all we'll look at the existing archetypes, the ones that I feel are most viable. Then we'll have a look at the new cards from both these sets and we'll talk a little bit about their impact. From there we will look at some new and improving archetypes that are sort of coming out of the woodwork even if they only gain bits and bobs here and there maybe because the format is shifting things can now sort of um, seem more viable and uh, become potentially contenders. Then we'll have a look at some top techs in this new format and finally we will end with a tier list as well. So let's jump straight into it. Twen uh, plenty to get on with. Let's kick it off with the existing archetypes. I say there's 26 viable decks. There may be more. There probably is. Expanded is so vast that I'm sure you could just about play anything and it's all reasonable. But I'll run through a few of them here. Lots of Garbodor variants. I think uh, going into sort of pre-Crimson Invasion and Shining Legends, the D-Valley box Garbodor deck seemed to be the best deck in format. I think Turbo Turtles, Turbo Darkrai... Night March, Trev, uh, Yveltal, Aquabox, all the ones on the left side really were the top contenders, I think, um, pre these new expansions. So uh, that very much is the case. And uh, there's also Toad variants around, lots of different Toad variants. Eels, Mega Guardi, Mega Ray, Primal Groudon sort of seems cameos here and there, as does Greninja. Donphan was something that I have been testing with a little bit, but it hasn't been popular for a while, nor has Archie Stoys really, just because of Getsis becoming popular. Gardevoir GX has sort of started to prove itself. Um, you do have things like Tropical Beach that can help out. Also, just the power of Gallade is really important when you're dealing with things like Turbo Darkrai, and that could well just be becoming more important with some new cards that we're going to talk about in a moment. Vesquim Flareon's an interesting one. Um... It can now use Salazzle as a backup attacker because you're already playing Blacksmith for the Flareon. And that's a pretty cool idea to close out games so you don't just lose to a Karen. And that's pretty cool. Zygarde Carbink again was experimented with by a few players. Stoutland Raichu was one that popped up with Ross Cawthon being one of the lead pilots for that deck and a few other standout players as well. As a really interesting lock deck using the Herdia to recover item cards. The Stoutland to prevent the opponent using... Uh, supporter cards and Raichu to paralyze to prevent attacking so a very annoying lock deck there then you have Vika Volt Tapu Bulu which uh, again I think it's only a few brave souls are trying in expanded uh, there's some interesting cards that you can play um, things like Chorus things again like the uh, Tropical Beach that could help out just gaining an A spec there's some cool consistency things that you can do to try and be good and let's be fair there's a lot of basic EX and GX Pokemon in this format so Bulu is actually like a one-hit KO machine in this meta, so that's like much better than it is probably in standard because there's a lot less viable evolutions in this format. And finally, Ninetales Salazzle, it's one that I've profiled like way back when. And in my last uh, video when I was talking about the expanded format, I said maybe that could be a breakout archetype. Um, and it's one that I still have my eye on. It's still sort of been memes. I think there's also a Charizard Lounge article that's been recently dropped on it as well. So it's still in the minds of a few people. And uh, I thought it was worth just throwing in here, seeing as I want to cover as many bases as possible. So let's kick off with the most important card from these two sets that will definitely switch up um, the format in Expanded. And that is going to be Zoroark GX. Now, when Zoroark came out, everyone was hyped and... From what we're seeing, it is doing well in Standard, but it is absolutely absurd in Expanded. In Expanded, this guy gets so many more toys, it has Skyfield, so its damage output is incredible. So not only is he just a draw engine card, he is oftentimes the main focus of a lot of different archetypes. Just because you can fill your bench and Riotous Beating does ridiculous damage, you can have Choice Band. Um, 
he also gains things like propagation execute so you can trade for free essentially and get free cards as long as you have your abilities online execute also helps out to maintain your high bench if you are being end to a low hand size uh, or if the stadium is taken away you can execute and put them straight onto the board if you need the extra damage for riotous beating which is insane you have two good Zoroarks that can help you out, the standard one, which we have in standard, but we also gain the foul play Zoroark in expanded, which could be a cool one-off in the deck. Foul play, really, really good against some of these uh, one-hit KO style decks that you can face, and you can sort of do a nice two-for-one there. And if you play things like Puzzle of Time and Rescue Stretchers, you can maybe cycle that and just continuously do two-for-ones, which is just insane. Dark Patch even makes Tricks to GX an option for the Darkrai GX himself, so... Again, copying more attacks just makes this card way more versatile. If you're trying to make a fully Zoroark-focused deck, there's a few try uh, ways you can try and build it. I think a low and muck is almost a staple as a 1-1 one -one line. Uh, there's potential for you to go thicker, um, just to sort of guarantee it and have multiple on the board so it's not really just Guzman and KO'd. And the reason for this mainly is because of the threat of pseudo Wudo, um, Limiting your bench, really making Riotous beating doing not much damage at all uh, so the muck is in there mainly to deny that and also it denies the opponent using tapu lele uh, in general and you don't really care that you don't use your own lele because you already have trade online and you can draw you know six cards before using your supporter every turn so muck is very cool there there's also the lichen rock builds that was very popular coming out of japan you have type coverage for mirror matches which is probably going to be important because zorak is a very very good archetype uh, you also gain the Bloodthirsty Eyes ability to make sure you can keep targeting down easy prizes like Shamans and Leles and really just race very, very efficiently. There's also the Bats list, which I actually am quite a big fan of. You have Resistance to Fighting, so you help cover Zoroark's weakness quite nicely. And also there's a handful of fighting types that are actually weak to Psychic, like the Buzzwall, for example, which I'll talk about in a moment. You have Skill Dive as an attack, which can be used for free against Night March if you keep their D Valley in play, which is nice. And throughout the game, especially against Night March, you're going to be getting these sneaky and surprise bites to take extra prizes along the way. Um, these also can help out when you're trying to reach numbers that Zoroark typically couldn't in a one hit KO fashion. Uh, so that could be pretty cool. There's also ways that you can play this card as a tech. There's like a 2 2 line. Maybe the Veltal variants can start playing this card for some extra. Um, attacking threats as well as some nice consistency in the late game and night march i think this is one that's also very big i mentioned uh just a second ago uh, vespiquin flareon plays salazzle gx and blacksmith to help you out post karen and i think zorak gx probably takes uh a slot in night march decks as like a 1-1 one, one or 2-2 two, two count once again taking out oranguru sticking in the zorak gx line so that you can trade throughout the game uh, and be consistent against ends but also it means you can use riotous beating if you get hit immediately with a Karen, and at the same time you can start trading night marches back into the discard pile to eventually get back into your night march attack so you have in theory unlimited discards of night marches so you never have to be too concerned about going crazy in the early turns uh, with your battle compressors making sure you get one hit KOs as aggressively as possible you're way less concerned about Karen. Now, of course, there's still the issue of Oricorio, but the Zorak GX definitely helps out the Night March archetype, so that's also something to bear in mind. And uh, it could also be splashed into the Vespiquim builds in a similar vein. If you don't want to play Salazzle, you could play Zorak GX, fill those slots with consistency cards, as well as being another DC-based attacker, which could indeed be very, very good and could be the way to play the card. So, yeah, Zorak GX, pretty crazy card. I think everything else from here will be a lot less impactful than Zoroark, so just bear that in mind. But yeah, there's still plenty to discuss here. Moving on to Sil Valley GX. This is one of my favourite cards that has come out from Crimson Invasion. And I believe Fighting Memory is absolutely insane and expanded. I've just said that Zoroark is nuts, therefore Sil Valley hitting it for weakness is also very, very good. You also hit for weakness on Turbo Darkrai, Drampa and Eels, which is very nice. There's still the Psychic Memory that can help you out. Um, which is also very important and we just have more to play with with Sil Valley now that we can just because he's a colorless Pokemon he can be splashed with so many things there's so many good DC attackers and expanded as well things like Seismitoad can really help you out and uh, almost like a Toji Veltold deck 
you can play Toad Sil Valley now, which is pretty cool. So in the background, you're building up Sil Valleys whilst Toad is in the active. Toad also, of course, um, being a water type, so you can deal with things like Landorus, which you wouldn't want to deal with as a Sil Valley because of the fighting weakness. Um, and also things like Domfan, which also could be an issue. That's a deck I'm actually quite a big fan of. And as I said, we just have way more options in this deck. You can start playing things like uh, Grass Energy and and you can play things like uh, Verizian EX, so you're never worried about status conditions. You can play lots of different bench sitters to just really make the most of Sil Valley's colorlessness, uh, so that you can hit for weaknesses on not just things that are fighting weak with the power with the uh, memory card, but you can hit for weakness on other things you're trying to target in the meta game as well. And Gyro Unit just makes everything a lot smoother. So I think this is again a really really powerful card just because he can become a fighting type. And uh, that's really awesome. Also, the type Null's doing 30 and reducing 30. That's also pretty good against Night Marchers. You can just sort of do a one-for-one one against Joltix here and there while you wait to build their discard pile up and uh, then get into things like Oracorio range or Toad plus Karen range, stuff like that. These are things to bear in mind. So I think Sil Valley uh, will definitely, again, be another contender in the format. I think a lot less so than Zoroark. I think he is fairly slow and it is a one-hit KO meta, so you can't really afford to turbo drive too often. But just being a fighting type or being able to gain fighting typing could be good enough for him to be a counter deck in the format at the very least. Next up we have Nihiligo GX. This is a pretty cool GX that we gain for the empty light ability. It's, it is most importantly a dark cool GX Oh wait, it's not Dark Cool GX, my goodness, I've written it wrong. It's Dead End GX from uh, the Turbo Dark Ride decks that obviously play Dark Ride GX. And uh, being an acti activator for that is really awesome. Uh, also being able to confuse and poison things like Seismitoads um, when you're not able to break the lock, that could also be very good for you. Forcing Acerolas, forcing switching cards from them could be really nice. And at the same time, they play d valleys themselves so sometimes empty lights getting extra damage on the board even that way so it can be like a plus power at the worst of times so that's pretty cool and obviously you have dark cloak so as long as you can use empty light you can use dark cloak so you're never worried about your own confusion which is very cool similarly this is one of these when you play this pokemon uh style abilities and whenever you hear that your ears have to prick at the thought of playing it in something like mega gardevoir because you can simply get those off the board and reuse them all over again by using Dragonites and Rescue Stretchers and stuff like that. So um, it is another card that could potentially be compatible with Mega Guardi, so that's something to bear in mind. Mega Guardi does have a two retreat cost, which is a little annoying, um, so maybe it's not ideal for that deck, but just being a potential plus power and again an out to things like Item Lock could be good enough to see itself as a one-of in Guardi decks. Next up we have Zerkatry GX, it's really interesting promo card. Um, I think this will probably go into electric builds uh, as a nice wall, forcing people to be VS seeking uh, things like their Hexmaniacs, which is awesome. Rumblewise isn't a great attack, but it can be useful and uh, it can get powered up quite easily just with the amount of eels you have. And Lightning GX as well can just be really awkward at times, uh, even if you're just catching people in the early game. Uh, for the sake of having a GX attack, if this is like one of your only two prize Pokemon on your in your deck, and then the rest of them are just things like Raikous, uh, why not have the option for this GX attack that can just disrupt the opponent so cleanly? Um, um, and throughout the game, it's always a threat as well, so that's pretty cool. He maybe is going to be the sort of lead Pokemon in a like disruption style deck alongside something like Gexis on turn one. You can get the Sis and then Lightning GX and leave them with you know, hopefully no supporters and no useful items, and then they're in top deck mode. Um, that's like a dream scenario. You can even go for something like uh, turn one delinquent after using a Marshadow or a red card. Marshadow is much more searchable in expanded because you have level ball, um, so it's actually way more viable than it is in standard. So you can leave your opponent with a zero card hand and seven prizes to take. And from there, you can start, you know, using your eels to build up something else. Maybe we just play a much thinner line of eels, just like two, because you're playing so much disruption. That potentially could be a way to see Zerkatry see play. At the very least, he is pretty much a strict upgrade to Aegislash. The fighting weakness is awkward, um, so maybe not a strict upgrade, but in many cases, he'll be an upgrade to Aegislash because 
he just has that 10 more HP and I think it's one less retreat cost as well so really good so potentially this is used in strafe and or stall decks like well lord um and the strafe decks things like dom fan and other strafers out there um just to be this annoying wall forcing the opponent to find the answers so yeah pretty nice inclusion that could sneak into some decks next up we have your boy buzzwell gx he is pretty much a strict upgrade to landorus again the weakness that buzzwell carries does mean that you'll probably play a split of both landorus and um buzzwell one thing i've found in testing in standard is that it's not great using zygarde as your backup attacker and uh, landorus however is much more likely to be a good partner for buzzwell because you're basically doing the identical thing you just have a different weakness uh so being weak to psychic is actually not as bad for buzzwell in standard or sorry in expanded as it is for standard because you get to play a landorus which is a way better card than a zygarde in general and you get to continue this uh, spread damage approach and start setting up all sorts of attackers uh, with lots of damage. So that's really good. So I think they're like a dream combination. I think maybe it's enough to bring back fighting bats. Um, bats just in general haven't seen as much play as they should, I really think. Just because people have forgotten about them just because um, people played Archeops. So bats were like a real risk. There's really no risk to playing bats in the new format, and I think they could indeed be very good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think all that spread damage, all that early pressure with bats on top could be really insane uh, for some of these fighting decks. And in general, being a fighting type, as I said with Sil Valley, is really good for Dark Horizon, Zoroark, Sil Valley, Dramper, and Eels. So pretty nuts. You get a lot of coverage with fighting types, and that's going to be a theme throughout this video. That fighting types seem to have a strong footing in the expanded format in general and uh, Buzzwall could be one of the lead characters for that just because he is so efficient so aggressive you have elixirs for knuckle impact i think you just go for that sort of build um or potentially just going heavy on the bats could also be an option for you as well so lots of different ways you can try and make this work and if you use bats aggressively enough you can make your opponent never evolve into their garbodors in the first place just because you've uh, sort of grinched them down so quickly with the bats themselves and even the bats can attack as well because uh, garbodor is actually weak to psychic also so yeah i think uh buzzwell bats or just landorus buzzwell these sound like really good archetypes so bear that in mind Next up we have Kartana GX, once again it has one of these abilities that says when you play this card uh, onto your board, so again we have to think it's a Mega Guardi card pretty much because Mega Guardi is one of the best decks that can simply spam these effects, it can spam Lele's, it can spam Shamans, it spams Dragonites, and therefore if you're in a matchup against special energy decks, of which there are plenty in Expanded, um, you can spam Kartana and be really really efficient. I think the fact that Garda, uh, Gardevoir has resistance to dark which is really important when you're facing um zoroark it means it's probably able to tank hits and it can use max potions and you have the kartana here to start getting rid of their dces very often and going for a two-hit approach you can be really really awkward for these zoroark builds so this could be a great way to sort of play the deck kartana only a one count in the deck but you can start you know really pressuring down some of these dc reliant decks even things like the sort of d valley box um garbador builds can be really shut down by this uh, as long as you have your abilities online so kartana really really good card for gardevoir in general a searchable e-hammer is so much better in expanded than it is in standard just because there's so many more dc reliant decks even something for like seismatoad this is really big um because obviously you can't use the enhanced hammer but you can use kartana so um yeah, I think it's just way more high value and expanded than it is in standard. So this should see play, I would imagine, in the expanded format. We have some comeback mechanics as well. Uh, we have the counter energy. I've really not looked into as many combos as I should have for expanded, just because it will take way too long for me to think of all the combos for counter energy. Um, but I'm sure some people will be looking at trying to maximize out on this card and get huge potential out there there are obviously potential for spread decks uh, we can go for like a spiritum movement of damage all at once with counter energy just like there is in uh, standard um and there's probably way less mr mimes and expanded so that could be an idea in general though this could just act as like an extra dce in some you know like quad dce lists that only play the four energy 
Now you can play, you know, your fifth, your sixth copy as well as um, special charge uh, to make sure you like rarely ever whiff on attachments. So that could be a pretty cool option. I doubt we will do that. I think most of the time just playing like one special charge or going to two special charge is better than just adding in counter energies. But maybe that's a line some people go down to have physically extra energies in their deck. And then counter catcher, it's actually very different in its role. It's really good for stall and mill decks. I think it becomes like an instant one of in Sableye Garb and the Stoutland Raichu deck. I think it's really good for both of those because it's so nicely spammable with puzzles. And then you have the Herdia recovering items and you have Sableye recovering items. I just think it's really insane. And um, in other puzzle variants, this could also be useful. Uh, maybe this is actually a Night March card. You think you're always ahead as Night March, but. The amount of people who are teching against you, sometimes you're actually not. And having the option to puzzle back Catcher to actually win the game is pretty insane. So maybe this is a card that actually goes in some of the more aggressive decks, like your Zoroarks and like your Night Marchers, just to make sure you close out those games. In a similar way how we've seen things like Target Whistle see play in these aggressive decks, Counter Catcher may actually see play for when your back's against the wall, and uh, you have two prizes to take, your opponent's down to one, and you can just, you know, instead of hoping that you draw into DCE plus Lysander for game or whatever, you can go for that Sycamore play and then hit your catcher or hit your puzzles and just find a combination to win the game. So, yeah, this could even be in aggressive decks, believe it or not. It's not only a defensive card. Um, this can be a way to steal games from the opponent, so... Pretty cool, seeing as though you have the option for it just to sit in your discard pile with puzzle compatibility. Next up, we actually have a few interesting cards for lightning support. Uh, Raikou is pretty cool for early game pressure, getting energy on the board and making you less weak to Garbodor in general. Stonefisk is pretty cool. It's a fighting type that uses lightning energy attack costs, so you can hit some fighting stuff for weakness. Unfortunately, its attack only does 70, so even with a choice band, you don't want Hikio Zoroark GXs, which is very sad but it could be an option against Turbo Darkrai. And finally, Shiny Rayquaza is actually like a real powerhouse. Sky Judgment doing 190. Uh, you do have an awkward energy cost and you need to have lots of eels in play to keep doing this, but we also do have double dragon energy, let's bear in mind. So you can do this fairly efficiently and the, dis the discard isn't too painful. If you're already playing DDE, why not think about playing things like um, Salamance CX or something like Giratina? Or maybe even uh, the Tyrantrum, that's even a possibility. Um, so yeah, you're just like a real nice, big, hitting, uh, basic, non-GX Pokemon. And you're not even really a glass cannon because you have 120 HP. So you're actually uh, forcing proper attackers out into the active. And for something that hits this amount, um, it's you know it's not weak to Karen, it's not weak to... Uh, Oricorio. It is, of course, weak to Ability Lock, but you can like go heavy on Blowers, which I imagine you will. And maybe you've got a really good deck here, so Eels could be on the Revival hype. I really do think that Raikou Eels gets outshone now by Shining Rayquaza, but there could also be a Lightning Box-style deck still, with things like the Zerk Tree that I mentioned, maybe even um, the Tapu Koko GX, and the new Raikou, maybe with the old Raikou as well, who knows, and Stonefisk just for type coverage and being able to respond on some of these new dark, oh sorry, new fighting weak Pokemon, so yeah, I think Lightning is in a really interesting place, Eels have always been fairly strong, uh, oftentimes they were sort of thrown in just to sort of counter some item lock decks like Trev and Toad, just because you have rough seas, that's still very much still the case, um, but now it could be much more of an aggressive build as well if you go down the dragon route, which is very cool. A few more new additions that just sort of see cameo roles. I think Shining Volcanion may be worth picking up a one of just because it can be a nice tech in Archie Stoice for helping you target down multiple Night Marchers and even things like multiple Combies or other low HP basics. Uh, with that dual pump attack, I think it's pretty cool. Some people were playing... Um, what's it called, Kyoga EX for a similar effect, and now you can use it on a non-EX, so it's actually way more efficient. This is pretty much an instant include. If you were playing the Kyoga, you now switch it up for uh, Volcanion. Latios is another really nice tech. If you're playing a DCE deck, you can, thanks to your Psychic typing, you can one hit KO uh, Muse if they're in the active, and also Joltix on the bench, so this can be a nice card for DCE decks. I think it's been sort of underrated in terms of how viable it is in Expanded. 
the new Magikarp is a strict upgrade for the Gyarados, so it can help you defend against the likes of Latios, Tapu Koko, and other things like that. Maybe it's enough to push Gyarados into the format. Bear in mind, though, you will constantly be having to play around uh, Oracorios. It's actually fairly easy for you to play around those. Um, but also, there's probably going to be Mr. Mimes everywhere, which are also annoying to deal with. So there are still issues here, but the Magikarp is definitely a step in the right direction um, for this uh, archetype, because that was always like a glaring issue with Gyarados, and that is just gone now, which is really, really cool. And Miss Magius is another card that I think is potentially good at maybe establishing a new Garbodor archetype, uh, seeing as though there are so many DCE-based decks out there. Simply having a Miss Magius on turn two, going for that Chaos Wheel, maybe in combination with a Flare Grunt or something, just forces your opponent to start digging. It forces them to start finding their Ranger if they play it at all. If they don't, they're in real trouble. And uh, if they do, they're still probably dump and drawing to try and find their Ranger and spam Ranger, and by that time, Garbodor will be in the one-hit KO range, which is insane. Um, additionally, this could even just be like a 1-1 one -one count in a Toad Garb list, uh, just to have the Chaos Wheel option. So you're Toad Tina, but only because, only committing like a 1-1 one -one line in an already uh, Toad Garbodor variant. So that could also be really cool. Walling DCU decks is like insane. And um, I'm pretty sure Ranger will be necessary in some of these core DCU lists. I know I play it in my Zoroark. I play it in my Night March, uh, but there are some that you don't play it in, like uh, Vespi, Quinflareon. They try and use Blacksmith to get around it, and it's not always easy for them. So, yeah, I think Miss Magius is really, really good in Expanded. I think, uh, obviously, it's like its damage output isn't good enough for Standard, but the DC decks you're walling is just so good. So, um, in Expanded, it makes a lot more sense and is really a potent card, in my opinion few more additions. Uh, Hooper is a pretty good wall, again, for these strafe decks, so it could be nice for the likes of Domfan. And potential one-of in Darkrai, just because he's a nice thing to put EXP share on, because it's probably going to be safe to stack a bunch onto him. And at the very least, he can be a nice non-EX to throw in the way. Force a 7 prized game, force a hex, really set your opponent back a turn at times. It can be a very cool one-of option. The Mill Tank, I feel like the format is quite one hit KO heavy in Expanded, but... If you find a deck that you can actually tank with, um, attaching energy could be nice. If you have enough free retreating, this could be good. Maybe even again, it's a card for these stalling decks. If you're playing well, Lord, you can start actually playing some energy cards now and going for Moo Moo Malt plays. Maybe you're going to play things like Warp Energy even. That could potentially be a possibility. So yeah, who knows? More healing in the format could be good for some stall variants. Who knows? Lusamine is a nice supporter card for specifically Primal Groudon. Recovering stadiums for your damage output is going to be important, as well as just getting back things like, um, what do you might call it, Tropical Beach, so you can keep drawing cards and making sure you set up. And in a similar vein, you can get back some of these one or two of Disruption supporter cards. Even though you are playing lots of Versus Seekers, it's probably better to go for a Lusamine so that you have Versus Seeker yourself for rounding out the game. And uh, you just always have time with Primal Groudon, as you all know. This card is really slow. Way too slow for a standard, I think. But Primal Groudon slows the game down to the point where you can actually benefit from Lusamine quite well. And uh, recovering things like Zero Six against, again, these very heavy DCE decks. I think you can get away with only taking like two prizes against Night Marchers so that you get rid of energy because you've been using E-Hammer and Zero Six spam the whole time. And maybe one or two loose in your list can um, make sure that you get there in the end and get rid of all of their double colorless even after they've used puzzles and charges and stuff like that. So yeah, loose mean pretty cool card for exactly Groudon. And for exactly Neuenvern GX, Devoured Field is a great math fixer. The difference between 50 and 60 is actually so insanely different. Um, you're now one hit KOing, you know, these little baby basics that are around. You get rid of Zeruas, you get rid of Rolts. All those things is going to be really insane. And at the same time, now with a choice band, you can do 90. And uh, going from 80 to 90 again is, as you all know, insane. Because now you're in two hit KO range of 180 HP um, GX and EX Pokemon, of which there are tons in Expanded. So um, the Valve Field is really insane for Neuvern. I think it's probably enough to push it into the format. And... Um, just because Ace of Spam is like so insane with that deck. And again, you can play Garbodor to shut down abilities and really shut down a lot of things and uh, just do this amazing cycle 
of jumping between your Neuverns, but now your damage output is actually relevant enough to get away with that play rather than just doing all this stuff for fun whilst only really doing annoying pokes here and there. So Devoured Field, again, it's actually like a huge buff for Neuvern in my opinion. So with all those cards said and done, let's look at the new and or improving archetypes. So Zoroark, obviously I've you know gushed over it. I think it's a really insane deck um, as his own deck, as well as potentially you know finding his way into lots of other builds as well. Sil Valley as a nice like counter deck, just because he can assume fighting typing as well as just being in general, you know, a safe card that gives you a great ability that you can sort of tech around, which is pretty cool. I want to see the directions people go for with Sil Valley. I think it has potential all over the place. Landorus and sort of like fighting bats essentially, I think could easily come back. Being able to play both of these cards and uh, not have to worry about any weaknesses because there's not really like, there's not a psychic plus water deck in the format, I don't think right now. So um, you're never going to be like out of the game if you just play like two Lambdurus and three Boswell, something like that. You should be really fine. And then you just have loads of bats and just start spamming. Gyarados looks pretty good. Um, I've talked about a couple of bat variants if you play it in Zoroark or Fighting Bats, which could be awkward. But the new Magic Arp definitely gives reason to start looking at the Gyarados deck all over again. Full Retaliation, really great. And uh, Water Typing isn't terrible if there is Landorus around, if there is... Turbo Turtles, which is probably, you know, it has previously been a top tier archetype and will likely continue to do so. Um, so yeah, having weakness on that deck is nothing to scoff at. Persimian is one that I've always wanted to work. Maybe one of these days it will. Um, having fighting typing is just insane. You can one hit Kira Zoroark, Sil Valleys and stuff like that, which is just going to be really good for you. Uh, psychic typing as well is very good uh, for one hit Kira Buzzwalls, one hit Kira other things we to sidekick like the um, Necrozma GX, which is in all the D Valley box decks. Um, obviously, Persimian is one of these decks that's really weak to item lock, so is Gyarados really, um, and that's probably something keeping them down. But you know that's never really stopped Night March. Obviously, Night March hits more than Persimian, doesn't hit more than Gyarados necessarily, um, but Persimian just having such insane typing, maybe it can start sneaking in. And, uh, you know, it gains some pretty cool stuff. You can play, like, Focus Sash and Persimian and expand it, and that's pretty cool as well. So could be an annoying deck to deal with for sure. And then the Neuvern. I said how important that um, difference between the Stadium and not having the Stadium is. Um, and, yeah, I think that's just apparent. That's why I've put it back in here as contention. Just because it's another item lock deck. It's not weak to Grass, which is insanely good for you because Glissapod is a great archetype in Expanded. Um, being weak to Fairy does have its own challenges, as we all know, uh, but Guardi isn't playing many ways to get around Item Lock in Expanded. It will sometimes play Diancy, sometimes it just plays Sylveon anyway. Um, so you can hopefully distort them and really force them into a bad spot. If you really want to, you can play Weakness Policy. I wouldn't encourage it, but you always could do that. And uh, you could even play other sorts of support in the background to maybe um improve your matchup there as well so maybe things like counter energy and uh Cabalion, who knows um we'll figure something for neuvern just because item lock's just inherently insane so you should definitely try and build around it now that the numbers are a lot better so on to top techs so on the far left i have pseudo wudo and parallel city uh, pseudo wudo is insane it's already been going into a lot of decks previously but now it just seems to be a really important card for the expanded format because of this roadblock ability it shuts down a lot of things that are going to be playing skyfield notably zoroark is going to be huge on skyfield i think there'll be some sort of eel variants that sometimes play skyfield uh turbo darkrai plays skyfield mega ray plays skyfield mega guardi sometimes plays skyfield sometimes they play d valley so that they can play max potion uh but in general they don't appreciate having only a four bench so Pseudo Wudo is really good for that. Of course, Zoroark will be playing a low and muck. I would imagine. If they're not, they're pretty crazy. Um, but even then, you can just Guzma up the muck, KO it, and then your Pseudo Wudo's online. Not only you've taken a prize, but you've also limited their damage output hugely. At the same time, they can, of course, do it to you, but it's much easier to you to rescue Stretcher back a Pseudo Wudo than it is for them to get a muck back online immediately, at the very least. So, Pseudo Wudo, a very nice tech card that will be going into a lot of decks, I would imagine. Parallel City in a similar vein, if you don't feel you have bench space for Pseudo Wudo, or if you don't think it fits the flavour of your own list, 
You can tr maybe play Parallel City. It's a good card if you don't need a specific stadium in your own deck. Again, for the Zoroark, um, you can't get around it with a low end mark. You're definitely capping them. It's just that um, sometimes they can recover it quite easily with rescue stretchers, puzzles. Uh, the amount of trading they do, they can just draw into their Pokemon and their Skyfield all over again. So bear that in mind, but I would imagine these are becoming more and more staple cards in the expanded decks. Oracora I still have here. There's basically just no change. Uh, Night March is still good. Um, there's a lot of Pokemon that can hit the discard pile if you're playing a Zoroite deck, especially if you're using things like Pseudo Wudo and Parallel. Naturally, they just start hitting the bin and Supernatural Dance could help you out. Um, being a Psychic type is actually quite good against some uh, things like the Buzzwall. If you slap the Choice Band onto the Oracorio, you can deal a good chunk there. And Supernatural Dance, still insane against Night March and um, Vesper Conflare. And I'm just saying that, you know, you still need to tech for those decks because they'll still be important. And uh, finally, we have Verizion and Confei. These may start going back into decks uh, just because Stoutland Raichu is like a really annoying archetype. And I can see a lot of people would hate to lose against that deck. And um, a lot of the time in Venus, it's like a real, real pain to get around. Even when you have things like Guzmaring. Uh, versus Seeker for Guzma, Puzzles as well. Um, it's actually a really hard deck to play against. Uh, you actually can't use Guzma, of course, because of Stoutland, so you need to play things like uh, your own catches and whatnot. Who knows? But yeah, I, I would I would say that like Verizia and Confei probably are sneaking into these decks so that you just don't get wrecked by the Raichu. Uh, maybe just more physical switch cards and ropes and stuff like that, maybe going back in as well. You know, these sorts of things you have to start thinking about now that we are having to play around that really annoying lock deck because if you leave it unchecked you'll be in a lot of trouble so yeah things like escape rope could definitely be going back in if you can though the confo and the verizian if you're playing rainbows or um grass or fairy energy yourselves these definitely could be consideration cards so after that we are moving on to our tier list and i've broken it down into three different tiers and uh, we'll go from tier 3 all the way to tier 1. So let's take a look at it. In at tier 3, I have a handful of decks, as you can see. I put stars by the decks that I've just said of new inclusions, and I've sort of projected where I think they are placed. Uh, Greninja in tier 3, just because of its own consistency issues and stuff like that. Groudon as well. There's a lot of annoying spread cards. There's um, lots of different sniping things. There's Glissopods, which can obviously hit you for weakness. There's lots of different things that Groudon has to deal with. Vesper Conflare, and I think it's probably just in general worse than Night March, just because it's less consistent. Um, but at the same time, it's got a nice Salazzle GX that you can play, or you can play uh, Zoroark as well now, which is pretty cool as like a finisher, slash um, it, um, it can just get more Pokemon in your discard pile, so it just helps your ramp at the same time, it helps you against N. I think it's like a really good inclusion to that deck. It also means that you're not just wrecked by Karen. Glissopod Toad, I think it's not the best Glissopod variant out there, but it's pretty cool. It's aggressive with lasers as well, which is very nice. Mega Ray gets really heavily caught in the crossfire that now that everyone's playing Pseudo Wudo and everyone's playing Parallel. That's real bad for Ray. I think it's not even tier three anymore if people actually do the right things and tech for this, uh, for the, um, Zoroark, maybe Rayquaza has to play a low and muck now. And if you play a low and muck in Ray, you're like really wrecked because you need to use Shamans, Hoopers, and all that stuff. So yeah, Ray just can't really come back from that in my opinion. Gyarados, I think it still has a lot of teething issues to get around. Um, there's just like Ability Lock plus Coco. There's um, just Oracoros in general. There's Pseudo Wudos as well, which is actually like low-key really painful for Gyarados so I think there's still issues there. Persimian, you know I'm not <laughs> too crazy here I still think it's not higher than tier 3 it's probably not the best fighting type deck you could be playing but the fact that it's non-EX uh, and can be annoying to deal with makes it you know at least something to consider. Vikabulu it's a stage 2 and uh, stage 2s in general uh, have a real hard time in Expanded uh, if you just miss Candy Vikavolt you will always lose the game I think. And that's not something I find too appealing. But once you get there, you really are an insane deck to play against. Just because you're like a Blastoise deck, but you don't need to have a hand, to be honest. You just need to have, like, an Orangaroo in play and you're fine. Um, Zygarde Carbink, pretty cool. It's a, it's a good fighting deck, but I think there are better ones out there. 
Archie's Doyce, um, again, I think it's just a wombo combo sort of deck that can go well for you on certain occasions. But when the combo doesn't come off quick enough, or if you just get hit with a, an, a Getsis or something like that, that can just put you off, even early hexes, all these things can be issues for you throughout different games. So that's pretty awkward. And Nine Tails to Lazzle, my baby, my precious. Uh, I want it to work. I'm going to keep trying to iron out the list and push it up the tier list eventually. But right now I still have it in at tier number three. So in at tier two, I have a big surprise for you all. Turbo Darkrai is actually going to end up here. And this is more so my projection for the future that there will be an increase in fighting decks um, because of the popularity of Zoroark. This is what I'm expecting at the very least in addition to the uptake in Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo is really, really annoying for Turbo Darkrai um, just because they require Skyfield a lot of the time. They're going to use Hooper, Shamans, Darkrai GXs so you can get lots of energy on the board and spread it all over the place. Well, that's not possible if you uh, are up against Pseudo Wudo and having to KO that is, you know, really annoying for your prize trade and they can always stretcher it back, etc. Really, really bad news for Turbo Darkrai. So... As long as people are smart, you're going to be playing Pseudo Wudo, and that's really bad for Turbo Dark. So I'm pushing it to tier 2. It could end up being similar to Rayquaza in that it simply can't cope, which would be pretty incredible because Turbo Dark Cry has been a staple for so long. Mega Guardi I have in at tier 2 as well. Um, I like that it can deal with a lot of things. Uh, it's probably got a good Zoroark. Gaining the Kartana is a big improvement, and... Uh, being able to max potion against a lot of decks is pretty cool, but there's still lots of one-hit KO in the higher tiers. There's Night March, there's Turbo Turtles, um, and all these things are awkward to deal with. And just in general, um, Guard variants aren't great for Guardi, in my opinion. So I still have this at tier 2, but this is definitely one I'm going to keep an eye on. I think it's definitely improving. Trev is in a precarious spot. There'll be a point where it's just unplayable. I think early on when everyone's just going to be playing Zoroark because it's great. I think Trev is like unusable. But if there are smart people or people trying to be smart and over predict the meta and they start playing fighting decks, that's obviously really good for Trev. So I think it'll be one of these cards that stays in contention just because it can cheese out wins by um, item locking. But at the same time, it really has to worry about the dark stuff. If it is any consolation, it's way better for Trev to face Zoroark builds than it is for Dark build, like Turbo Darkrai. Um, and that's really because you can put your opponent on a clock way quicker because they just have little 60 HP Zoroas that you can spam. And even if you're not KOing their active Zoroark, if they start evolving up, you can start pressuring their bench quite nicely. Uh, so potentially Trev is going to be more dangerous there. Trev can also use counter energy by the way which is something to really note if you can go counter energy uh, plus D valley you can do your tree slam attack way more efficiently so potentially that's something to bear in mind. I don't know if you will play that though just because it's not hugely consistent and Trev sort of needs to be consistent to work. Aquabox pretty cool. Again this was sort of in here as one of the answers to Trev so maybe it'll die down for a little while. It's still good against turbo turtles. It's still Fairly reasonable against Zoroark builds, I would say. Um, just because you can play things like Articuno to take easy prizes on Zoru is very aggressively. Um, similar story for Night March. You can do the same thing with Articuno. And uh, I think Articuno is also insane for Guardi. Basically, it's the Articuno show that also plays other Pokemon like Toad and stuff. So, yeah. Aquabox, I still think, is really good. Eels, I've just put in general now. It's just Eels now. Because you could probably face Shining Rayquaza. Or you could face like a Zerka Tree eel box deck so i think raikou eels is sort of turning into a more general concept of just eels plus stuff and i think that's a good direction for eels to go into it does have to worry about some increase in fighting decks especially things like buzzwall and that's probably what keeps it from being in the higher tier list right now toad viper and totina i think these aren't the best toad variants that we have available um there's a few on the next page in tier one but these are definitely uh, potential options for you. Tina may be increasing in popularity just because um, Zoroark is another DC based variant. And uh, Toad's Viper, yeah, Poison is annoying. Poison does add up, but um, I think there are better options. Noivern, I've said, I really like its maths. Um, it's just a really good Acerola bounce style deck, I think. And when your maths is improved, it itself is just way better. And having more item lock in the format is just really good, I think. 
uh, just be, it's a really good feature, of course, to have forever. And also Neuvern has um, special energy lock inherently as well. So there's so much going for the Neuvern card. It's just never quite been good enough. But I think now the stadium potentially pushes it as far as tier two for me. Buzzwall slash fighting bats, I think, is just really good. Incredible aggression. Um, having that 10 HP is so big in so many situations. It's actually insane. Uh, having weakness on Zoroark, uh, being pretty good against Night March if you just go heavy on bats. Um, pretty good against the D Valley Garb decks if you use things like Landorus. You can be aggressive. You can target down the Garb, the Trubbishes before they become Garbodors. I think you should have a fairly decent late game as well if you have to uh, get through their Drampers and such. I don't think that's too big of an issue for you. Uh, so yeah, I think Fighting Bats potentially is very, very good. Stoutland Raichu, I think as long as people don't have the answers to it, if they're not playing their escape ropes and other uh, tech things, it could be really awkward. It's a very difficult six prizes against uh, Stoutland Raichu just because the lock is so annoying to get around. And uh, yeah, if you leave it unchecked, it will do very well. So here is my warning to you. Be aware of Stoutland Raichu. Test against it. Know what you need to put in your deck to beat it because currently I have it solidly at tier 2 just because it's counterable. Um, but if you don't counter Stout and Raichu, it will definitely tear through you. Uh, Sil Valley GX, I put it at tier two, just because its typing is probably insane and it's so flexible and techable that you can mold it to be good against what you expect to be the top three or four decks. And uh, that's just an insane trait for any deck to have. So I think Sil Valley inherently can't ever be tier one just because it's not a one hit KO machine and it will get wrecked by other one hit KO machines. But in general, I think um, it can target one or two archetypes very strongly and therefore be a good pick in certain tournaments. So there we go. Finally, we have the top tier of the expanded format. Zoroark GX variants, uh, I think, go straight into the top tier. I think they really do have to be dealt with. Even with Pseudo Wudo, you can win games just because you have a low and muck. Um, even against fighting stuff you can win if you are just trading two for two um, just because you can be a one hit KO deck straight back onto them and you can even play bats if you want to have type coverage and have some resist uh, resistance in there as well um, yeah I think Zorox just insane it definitely has to be a huge threat I think it actually enters the format in like the top four decks not only the top ten that I'm showing here so yeah really really good card Garbador variants, most notably uh, D-Valley Garb, I think is definitely a really big powerhouse still. And uh, I think that doesn't even change, even with Zoroark, basically. Um, Garbatoxin is just more valuable, if anything else. So that's really good. There's also the Glissopod Garb, I think it's also very strong. Sable Garb is a great lock deck. And Toad Garb as well. I think all of these are top tier contenders. Um, just Garb is insane. Ability Lock's insane in Expanded. Item lock's insane if you're playing Toad. Glissopod is just an annoying thing that can bounce, like I was saying with the Neuvern. Um, Glissopod and Neuvern, probably the best two archetypes that can get away with that. Also, Zoroark can play Acerola as well, by the way. Um, so these are things to bear in mind. Night March, I think, is just in general, you know, it's a ridiculous damage output deck for non-EXs. Even if it is teched against, it can still win. And now with the addition of Zoroark, you're way less weak to Karen, which is great. And uh, you also have um more sustainability and more uh, ways to thin your own deck throughout the game a lot better than oranguru as well so yeah zoroark is a great improvement for night march and it continues to be really good turbo turtles i still think is great um it's just so simplistic and uh unlike turbo dark cry and zoroark and all these other decks um it's not really phased by pseudo wudo at all this deck can really easily have a four bench and not be concerned about it and if you play things like Brooklyn Hill to get out your, um, uh, what's it called? Your Zoroark EX, oh, what am I saying? Volcanian EXs, you can also get Pseudo Wudo out very efficiently on turn two. Most of the time, bear in mind, Turbo Turtles won't be playing uh, Brooklyn Hill, but it's maybe something you could consider to get really fast um, Pseudo Wudos out because it's just really annoying to deal with. So yeah, Turbo Turtles plus Pseudo Wudo sounds like a really good combination because you're a beastly one hit KO deck and you really do slow down lots of other decks Yveltal Seismitoad I've put in at tier 1 I think it really cashes in on the fact that there will be other fighting variants around and obviously you have resistance which is great 
And I think in general, you're just a really strong shell. And um, the way you tech the deck is going to be nice. I think you can go on a non exy build when you have one or two of the Fright Knights and one or two of the baby Yveltals and only have like one or two Yveltal EX. You can go heavy on the Toad if you want to and just have one or two Yveltal EX once again to start powering up on the bench while you're doing this slow punch approach. Uh, very, very viable still for sure. And uh, at the bottom there, Guard of YGX, I think you gain so much power in Gallade that this is just insane. Really, really good for doing two-for-ones against Zoroark. I think you're more than likely going to play Rescue Stretcher to try and recover that and recycle it. Um, I think you have good outs against the Garbodor decks, as we've seen is the case in uh, Standard, that you can use your GX attack to recover your items. Uh, you're more consistent than you are in Standard because you can play Beach, you can play an A spec. These all help you out. There's Cream on top, which is really cool. I think Gardevoir is probably also quite high on the tier one tier list again i think this is potentially top five and finally for me the surprise pick of dom fan uh, this is a deck that i have a soft spot for i really like strafe approaches um i think the fact that trev is declining for sure as long as zoroark enters the format as the powerhouse i expect him to be um, I think Donphan definitely has a chance to do insanely well. Of course, you pick up a great matchup against Zoroark. Uh, you have a great Night March matchup inherently. You're pretty good against Turbo Turtles, depending on how many ho -Oh they play. Um, you're not hugely phased by the Garbodor variants, especially if they are reliant on um, Drampa, because obviously Necrozma's not doing anything. If you tech with things like Latios, um, you can do quite nicely against the Garbodors themselves as well. So, yeah, I think Donphan's... Again, a really good card. Again, really annoying to deal with um, for a lot of decks. I think you're really only worried about things like Trev, things like Yveltal Toad. And uh, yeah, in general, that's just really insane. So I think Donphan is deserving his place in Tier 1 as long as you build a good enough list, which I've been trying to iron out for like a month. So I don't blame you for not expecting to see him in Tier 1. But trust me, I think he is definitely good enough as long as you put the time in and uh, make it work so there we go guys that is my tier list for expanded i hope you did enjoy this video it took a while to uh, sort of collaborate and come together with lots of different ideas because you have to think about so much in expanded and um it really has been shaped up a lot i think zorak is one of the biggest introductions to expanded we've seen in a long time and that really does change things around you can see where i'm going with this there's going to be uh, pseudobudos everywhere and there's going to be uh, a lot more fighting stuff that becomes viable. I think specifically Donphan and Fighting Bats, they sort of enter the fray once again as top contenders and uh, are definitely things to keep an eye out for as well as other techs around as well. So let me know what you guys think about Expanded. Was there a deck that I missed? Is there something that shouldn't be where it is in the tier list? Was there a new card that I missed that's actually insane in some sort of combo? Let me hear it all down below. For now though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Cheers.